I went back and revisited our discussion for Maggie's plan, your previous film, and we spoke about your creative process and marinating on ideas, character qualities and characteristics, which are all at the center of your new film, She Came to Me. Was there something particularly enlightening about this film as it pertains to the creative process or and or I guess the, the sacrifices you make for your art or are these ideas explored here like material you've been marinating on for some time and it wasn't exactly new, but gradual? Well, exactly. I, I did have a short story called She Came to Me that's in a collection called Total that was just published. And that story had a blocked writer who runs into a woman in a bar and she kind of something happens that makes him jolts him into having a new character. He's completely blocked and he, but then I thought, well, there's, it lingered with me, you know, mm. I published the story, but then it sort of lingered with me. And I was thinking, could this be a movie? Could this be a movie? And I was, and then he sort of gradually turned into an opera composer and she turned into a tugboat captain. And then I thought, well, the, I had this other pair of lovers that were the very young and the idea of, um, I had been very inspired by a movie by Milos Forman called Taking Off, which was a movie from the 1970s, in which there was this young girl who was very kind of like much more innocent than the parents that were so worried about where she was. And meanwhile, they're much more debauched and decadent than she is, you know? And so the idea of like that the young harbor this kind of special wisdom or innocence was something I had harbored for a long, long time. And then Patricia's character of the therapist who secretly has a kind of metaphysical yearnings um, just kind of came to me. I don't know really how else to describe it, but then I had these three sort of stories, lines or love lines, and I wanted to braid them and I kind of braided mm -hmm. them like a challah bread, you know, and, and, and sort of like, so it was, it was a long process of, uh, of marination. I mean, like the film really didn't completely become itself for several years, part, I mean, the, the script, because I, I needed to figure out not only who these people were, but who they were to each other. Mm. Um, and then there's also the, the, the you know, the, the Polish cleaning lady and her husband or her boyfriend. And, and you know, there's just a lot of um, text, a, a lot of characters and then characters under the characters and through the, it's like veins running through the whole thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Considering this film opens up a dialogue about creatives and the things they observe in their lives or take from their own journeys and apply them to their work with some, with, I guess, with some aspects adjusted, like uh, dropping truths into a story centered on aliens or uh, a Sweeney Todd like murderer. Is there a difference to you in cinematic stories that use genre elements like sci-fi or horror to explore certain truths about the world and how we live in it versus the more, I don't know how to say it exactly, but like more reality based dramas that tackle certain truths head on? I believe that whatever the genre, if a filmmaker or writer does a good job, like an honest job, it's going to be some kind of self-portrait. And it doesn't matter if it's, if it's all about aliens or it's all about a murderous tugboat captain or it's all about, or it's, she came to me in it, it, this thing that I've made, it's going to be a snapshot of who you are at that moment. Even if there's not one single shred of clear autobiography in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It reflects who you are, how you think, what you feel about the world and your tone of being, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Would you have any interest in incorporating genre into your work? Well, I could suppose you could say this falls into a kind of genre. You know, I'm slightly uncomfortable saying it's pure like romantic comedy because it's sure. also romantic drama in a way um, as well. I think that there is, Billy Wilder in the apartment kind of hit on a little bit this kind of tone where it's both funny and serious at this, you know, a different, you know, it's very tone bending, let's put that that way. And I would totally be into certain kinds of genre. Um, yeah, you know, suspense is interesting to me, for example, I don't think I'd be a horror director, but um, uh, I, I have, you know, ex dwelled in the genre of, you know, drama and comedy and sort of like, but always, usually there's a bit of both in my work. There's, it's just one thing gets dominant, more dominant. Yeah. I think you could make a horror movie about Trey. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>
Uh, one scene that I really took to, and it's pretty much the moment that opens up the narrative to what it ultimately becomes, and it's this interaction between between Stephen and Patricia, um, Peter Dinklage and Anne Hathaway's character, uh, who are husband and wife. Patricia is trying to get Stephen out the door to focus on her therapy work and to get Stephen to find a jolt of inspiration in the world. And, and that's like 100% true about how you can meet a stranger sometimes and the most beautiful thing can happen and uh, an ill pattern, so to speak, can be broken for the better as it does for Steven. I'm curious about any unexpected, beautiful exchanges you may have had in your life that you found most fruitful to you, to your being or creative process, if I may ask. Well, you know, I, I do feel that my life is full of such exchanges and moments, you know, where if you stay open, the whole point is to stay alive, like genuinely awake and alive. And I think everybody forgets that sometimes, you know, we're staring at our phones or we're looking at our schedules and we're thinking, what do I have to do next? But if you just relax and take a walk and let yourself get lost, you know, or even if it's just lost in your own day, lost in your own living room, like things can happen and befall you that will loosen you up and give you so much in terms of like, not only as a creative person, but just as a person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so for sure, uh, I, 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 you know, like even the woman who runs the small tugboat company that we were very, you know, I talked to a lot and, and, and we used one of their boats in this, and L Dorothy Lorraine, uh, Elaine Julian is a remarkable person. Like she's a really hard-nosed businesswoman who works with her kids, her daughters in the business, and she runs this whole tug company and they all adore her. And she was just a really inspiring woman who, you know, lives in Staten Island and, and uh, runs this company. And I would never have met her if it wasn't for this, you know, and yeah. it's these, and that's what you're doing always when you're trying to find, you know, your way through a narrative like this. I do a lot of research because it's in researching real people that you get the best ideas.